It's been a couple of weeks since Bamboo's huge announcement where they're doing this security update and a lot of consumers in the 3D printing scope are completely outraged and we did a video talking about that and honestly I completely understand why people are upset. Personally, it's one of those things where in my mind if I stopped buying products or got rid of something I owned every single time that a company did something I didn't agree with, well, frankly, I wouldn't own technology. So here we are looking into the future of 3D printing and talking about what else is going on. And if you're one of those people who's so outraged at what Bamboo is doing that you want to look at alternatives or maybe you want to save a couple of bucks and still get something that has some great horsepower and great potential for quality 3D printing, then you're in luck. That's what we're going to talk about today is going to be some alternative 3D printers to the Bamboo Lab lineup. This video is not meant to be an endorsement of anything. We're not going to be really making recommendations or telling you to run out and buy specific printers. Mostly we're just going to be talking about some different options that you can find at different price points in 3D printing that are going to encompass some of the same features and hopefully see similar performance to what the Bamboo Lab printers are doing. If you're interested in checking out any of the printers that we talk about, be sure to do your research and find some reviews. Don't go buy a printer just because I mention it in this video. The first entrant in our list of Bamboo alternatives is the one that I'm the most excited about. Coming in with a price tag of around $1,200 US for an assembled 3D printer is none other than the new Prusa Core 1. Now, there are a handful of videos floating around. A lot of the bigger content creators are already showing theirs off, and I am personally waiting for mine to come in the mail. However, I think that the Core 1 is the perfect substitute for something along the lines of the X1 Carbon. It's an enclosed Core XY machine that's fast as hell. There's something that makes this one a little bit more special. Whereas the Bamboo Lab machines are all focused on being super closed and have that high-end polished look, the Core 1 takes a very different approach. It still has the aesthetic of an old school 3D printer in a much more modern package. And Prusa, being Prusa, has it opened up to where you, as a maker, can actually personalize this machine with all sorts of 3D printed parts and upgrades and accessories. And I'm sure the more time this printer spends on the market, the more upgrades and aftermarket components that are going to be available. Prusa has already shown off a couple of options like the magnetic nozzle holder, genius, build plate storage, a dry box for your spool holder, which, by the way, major props to Prusa for making the spool holder on the side of the machine. If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time whatsoever, you know how much I hate spool holders on the back of Core XY machines. And frankly, I think Prusa just did an amazing job designing the Core 1. You have a really, really sleek, minimalist looking package. It has a full steel exoskeleton that they're saying even if you buy an unassembled kit, you can't put it together backwards. Well, I'd like to try my hand at that eventually. I ordered a assembled one because I don't want to wait. The Core 1 is aimed at a really comparable price point to the X1 Carbon, and I think that it offers a very different approach to the same results of high quality, high speed 3D printing, just with more of Prusa's open-mindedness about how exactly you go about getting there, featuring things like the Nextruder, which is customizable, you could have the option to use your new Prusa nozzles or use an adapter and go back to the old school E3D V6 style nozzles, which I'm really excited about because I have a few of those on hand from some companies to test out. And if you're a multicolor 3D printer, well, you're in luck because the Core 1 has support for the MMU3 from Prusa. One way that Prusa absolutely just dominates bamboo is their forward thinking and backwards compatibility. After the Core 1's been on the market for some time, there's actually going to be a direct upgrade path to go from a Mark IV to a Core 1, which is really awesome because you're going to get a really nice sized printer with a smaller footprint than the bed slinger of the Mark IV. And speaking of that backwards compatibility and forward thinking, you can even use your Mark IV build plates with the Core 1. Prusa is really, really driving home this ecosystem that they've spent, well, years and years building out and while it's been a long time coming and it has a little bit smaller of a build volume at 220 by 250 by 270 
it's still going to be an incredibly capable machine and probably the 3D printer that I'm absolutely the most excited about in 2025. Next up is the Bamboo A1 we have at home, or if you've been paying attention to what's happening in 3D printing, the new Creality High. The Creality High looks an awful lot like if you copy and pasted and lowered the resolution of the Bamboo A1. Personally, I'm still excited about this machine. Despite our review of the K1C, I've really always had a soft spot in my heart for Creality. Sure, it's fun to joke and to meme, but they're out there doing stuff. And one of the things that Creality tends to do really well is take a popular design and mass produce it in an affordable manner. And while the A1 is not exactly an expensive machine, it's an incredibly popular one. Coming in at a price tag of $469 for the combo with the CFS, which is Creality's version of the Bamboo AMS, or $299 for the standalone printer, the new Creality High seems really promising. You're going to get a bigger build volume than you get on the A1, while still maintaining the higher speed nature of these next generation bed slingers. You get a side mounted on the gantry camera, much like your A1. You get a nice touch screen right up front, which looks really familiar. A new Creality extruder design, and all the sensors in the world. Now, one thing that I think that Creality is actually taking with their series of printers and kind of doing better than Bamboo is instead of developing a new multicolor unit for their other lines of machines, with Bamboo, you have the AMS for the P1 series and X1 series machines and the AMS Lite for the A1 series. Creality is just using one multicolor unit available for every machine that it's compatible with. Personally, I think that's a really nice touch because that means if you already have one from a previous machine or you just want to retrofit a machine you already have, you don't have to worry about compatibility as long as it works with that lineup of printer. This is a really solid approach and something that I think Bamboo should have learned from considering they started these contained multi-material units without a buffer and they went off into a different direction on their own choose your own adventure thing. Not really a big fan there, and frankly, props to Creality for just using one multicolor unit. If you're a big time multicolor printer, that's awesome. If you want to print 16 colors, well, congratulations. The Creality High is capable of, capable of doing 16 colors with four of the CFS units. Very similar to the original X1 Carbon and the P1 series of printers where you could daisy chain up to four of the AMS units, you're going to be able to do that on the new Creality series of machines where they're offering this multicolor setup. So if you like to print with a lot of colors, personally, I don't. I think that four is typically enough for what I care to do because I'm impatient and don't like to wait for multicolor prints. But if you like to do a lot of color printing or you want a lot of filament in reserve for failover, then you are going to be really happy with the prospect of this new ecosystem. Next up, we're going to take a step back into the Core XY fully enclosed Speed Demon kind of machines that the Bamboo machines really brought to the forefront of the market. And we're going to talk about the Anycubic Cobra S1, which is another machine that I'm super hype about because I actually pre-ordered one. If you are looking at this video at the time of release or thereabout, the Cobra S1 is still on pre-order with an early bird price of $649 and a regular MSRP of around $700, $729. Realistically, I don't expect to ever see this machine hit that price point. However, it's a possibility. If you ordered it early, you chances are got it for a lot lower of a price. But that's not the point. The point is, Anycubic has been around in the 3D printing space for a really long time they've made some of my favorite machines that I've ever owned. I still have my original Anycubic Viper, and it still works a treat. Is it as fast as some of these newer printers? Absolutely not. But there's just something about the way that it looks, and the fact that I never really had any crazy failures with it. And after I'd had my fun, I actually sold it to Cameraman Bo as his first 3D printer, and that's what got his journey started, and frankly, he did quite a lot of printing with it. Our first ever Loyal Moses toy drive that we participated in, the Anycubic was an absolute workhorse for him. And I actually kind of bought the printer back from him a couple of years ago. 
I've been enjoying the machines that I've had from AnyCubit quite a lot, and the Cobra S1 seems really promising. You have one-handed nozzle swaps, a really good-looking screen, multi-color support for up to eight colors from one multi-material unit. Again, AnyCubic is doing the same thing as Creality, where they're using one enclosed multi-color unit for all of their multi-color capable 3D printers. And while it's not 16 colors, it's eight, these units are really exciting to me because any cubics are actually heated and function as filament dehydrators in addition to a kind of just dry box, which I love the idea of that. Having an enclosed place where filament can be stored dust free, and if your machine is capable of printing higher attempt things such as nylon that require drying, then this is a really interesting solution to the multicolor problem you're going to get the standard affair, right? There's going to be a spring steel bed sheet, a 220 by 220 by 250 volume build plate. You're going to have another slicer to use. And of course there's another 3D printing file repository that they're introducing, but that's not really what excites me. What excites me is a company that's been in the 3D printing space for a long time, catching up and doing something that a lot of companies are doing really well. And the Cobra S1, to me, looks like a really promising machine. I've kind of personally heard a mixed bag on the Cobra 3 series of machines. Can't personally verify, didn't test them. However, I can say that it wasn't enough to deter me from wanting to pre-order this machine and putting my money where my mouth is. So I'm excited to see what the future holds for any cubic and to be able to actually give this thing a try. Rounding on our list is a 3D printing company that we had some success with last year, and that's going to be FlashForge. Late in 2024, FlashForge released the Adventure A5X, which is a follow-up to the super popular A5 series of 3D printers, which we received one of, and I reviewed really well because I enjoyed my experience with it. It's a machine that I still genuinely find to be a treat to use. The A5X is kind of going to be more comparable to the Bamboo P1P, which was my first Bamboo Lab printer. It's an open air Core XY speed demon of a 3D printer boasting a 220 millimeter cubed build volume. You know, spec sheet galore, right? It's super quick, it does a great job, easy change nozzles. But what's really exciting about this one is the multicolor solution. It's not an add-on multicolor unit. It's not an afterthought multicolor unit. It's actually integrated into the side of the machine. Hanging off the side of the machine is a place to mount your spools and a filament feeder for all of your multicolor fun at a decently attractive price point. This little Core XY Speed Demon is actually pretty competitively priced if you can find it in stock coming in at about 449 US dollars, which is not the most budget friendly, but it's also not a necessarily premium priced option. It's affordable if you save a couple of pennies. You're going to get, from what I'm to understand, pretty solid multicolor experiences. And it seems as though it would be fairly easy for you to enclose it if you wanted an enclosed Core XY 3D printer. My personal experience with my FlashForge Adventurer 5M Pro is what leads me to add this machine to the list. I think at the price point, it's really compelling. I think that they took a Prusa inspired, but very unique in its own right, approach to multicolor printing. It's not a crazy machine with a bunch of technology that you have to really sweat and worry about. The learning curve is going to be fairly low on this one compared to some DIY solution or something to that effect. Personally, I like FlashForge. I have a good working relationship with them. No money has ever changed hands. They just sent us product and my representative with the company is super nice. I like talking to them. I'm going to always be honest with you guys about our relationships with these companies. And if somebody sends us something, I'm going to tell you, we're going to disclose it. So personally, I'm not hands on with this machine yet. I do really want to get my hands on one in the future to play with, but Based off of my previous experience with the company, I don't have anything that I think is a major red flag or that I'm super disappointed about. Hey, if you made it this far into the video, you're awesome, and I love you. You probably needed to hear that today. I think we all need to hear it a little bit more. But seriously, if you're enjoying this type of content, be sure to like the video, 
give us a subscribe if you've enjoyed a couple of our videos and maybe share it with a friend so that way we can gain some other eyes and help us to maybe in the future be able to do bigger and better videos and maybe be able to get a little bit more hands-on with some of these new machines because as of right now, we're still buying 99% of the machines that come into the channel to review and I'd really like to be able to give better opinions based off of hands-on experience. The reality of the situation is trying to make a YouTube channel grow while working a full-time job is not the easiest thing in the world and we want to be able to make the kind of content that you guys enjoy. So let us know in the comments what types of videos that you'd like to see us make as time goes on. As always, I want to give a huge shout out to all of our amazing YouTube members. Your guys' financial support goes a really long way to enabling us to be able to continue to upgrade our gear, acquire products, and to be able to just keep making these videos. But if you're not a YouTube member, just watching the video goes a long way too. We appreciate you, and we're just thankful to have you here. There we go. As we start the year, one of the biggest 3D printing companies on the planet right now found themselves fully embroiled in controversy yet again. Personally, I still like my Bamboo Lab products. I'm not getting rid of them. I just wanted to share some really solid alternatives with you guys because frankly, if I can help educate you guys and give you some options if you're not super happy with what Bamboo Lab is doing, I know they're starting to maybe backpedal on a couple of things they talked about, but for a lot of folks, that's not necessarily good enough. And I don't disagree with your point of view. It's just not a sentiment that I share at this moment. We'll see as time goes on. I want to give people options. I want to share my enthusiasm for 3D printing. And frankly, it's pretty frustrating what Bamboo Lab did. So if you found this list useful, be sure to let us know in the comments. Are there any 3D printers that you think are a solid Bamboo alternative that maybe I skipped over? Let us know about it. I'm genuinely curious to hear your guys' thoughts about the list overall and maybe share some suggestions for some other machines with folks in the comments. As always, I appreciate you and have fun printing.